Hello everyone and welcome back to the Unideck tutorial series. My name is Marius Kostelik and in this video we will be covering advanced data processing features in Unideck. Now coming back from where we left off at part 2, the first parameter we see is this Gaussian smoothing function. This is useful for smoothing out noise in a mass spectrum. An input value of 5 will smooth the data with a Gaussian that has a width of 5 data points. Once we've clicked process data, you can see how the noise is now in lower intensity. Now this next parameter sets a certain number or width of bins collected for linearization which is down here at the bottom. So I'll be coming back to this bin every option once we've gotten down to linearization. For now just know that if the bin value is 0, then the linearization function is turned off. This third option affects the background subtraction that we clicked on earlier. In Unidec, there are three options for background subtraction. Subtract minimum, line, and curved. If we click the background subtraction button, you'll see that the default is set to subtract curved 100. However, let's go through each option individually. To better show these options, I'm going to turn off the publication mode, which is down below here and to the right. And once we hit process, it will put the y-axis in relative intensity. And now I will zoom into the mass spectrum a bit more and right click to save that new minimum and maximum. Now, in subtract minimum, the minimum data points intensity in the spectrum will be subtracted from the whole spectrum. This will shift the whole spectrum down so that the lowest data point has an intensity of zero. So here you can see that the minimum data point is about 0.2 relative intensity. And when we hit process, that shifts the whole spectrum so that now that 0.2 is now at zero. The minimum baseline subtraction is most useful if you have a constant raised baseline and want to drop all points by the same amount. The number entered in the box doesn't matter with minimum. Any number other than zero will turn it on. The next option is subtract line. This averages the first and last points of the spectrum and creates a line between them, which the whole spectrum is subtracted by. The value in the box sets the number of data points that are averaged at the front and back end of the spectrum. If I set this value to 100, it will average the first 100 and the last 100 data points and create a line between them and subtract that line from the spectrum. The line baseline subtraction is most useful if you have a linearly sloping baseline. The last option is subtract curve, which creates a smooth baseline based on local minima throughout the spectrum. The number in the box specifies how many data points to include in generating the local minima across the baseline of the spectrum. Using a smaller number will generate lots of local minima from only a few data points, resulting in a rougher baseline that more closely matches the spectrum. Using a larger number will generate only a few local minima from many data points, resulting in a smoother baseline for subtraction. In other words, a smaller number, like 10, will give a more dramatic baseline subtraction and a larger number like 100 will give a less dramatic baseline subtraction. The default value of 100 works well in many cases but you can adjust that up or down to get less or more baseline subtraction. I'm going to keep the setting at the default which is subtract curved 100. This next option, Intensity Threshold, 
is useful for removing lower intensity data points, including noise. Intensity threshold removes the data points with intensities less than the set threshold. Normally, Unidec normalizes the data so that the maximum intensity is 1. So if I set this to 0 0.1, it will remove the data points that are below 10% of the most abundant peak. When I click process data, you'll see that the remaining data is above that 0.1 threshold. However, you can turn off normalization as we'll see later, and in that case the threshold will need to be adjusted to reflect the absolute signal intensity. Here I'm going to turn off the intensity threshold because I don't want to subtract any points. Next we have attic mass. This value is the mass of a hydrogen because we're analyzing N plus H ions. However, if we were measuring sodiated ions, then we would use the mass of sodium, for example. Most of the time it's M plus H ions unless we use negative ionization mode. For negative ionization mode, this adduct mass will have to be switched to negative. Thankfully, we can simply click a negative mode button in Unidec to automatically switch this adduct mass to negative. Here, this function called acceleration voltage is used to correct for the detector efficiency between big ions and small ions in time of flight mass spectra. We won't go into detail here, but you can learn more about detector efficiency correction in the first Unidec paper shown here. This next parameter called data reduction is useful for removing lower intensity peaks similarly to intensity threshold. However, data reduction does not use relative intensity. Instead, it sorts all the data from most intense to least intense, removes a lower fixed percentage that we can control by adjusting the value in the box. When I use 10% data reduction, it's taking away the least abundant 10% of all the data points. It is not based on intensity, except to sort the data points from least to greatest. Therefore, 10% data reduction, shown here, looks very different from 10% intensity threshold, shown here. When choosing which to use, think about whether you want to specify a fixed intensity, which is intensity threshold, or a fixed percentage of the data to remove. In that case, it's data reduction. Note that data reduction is commonly used with high resolution FTICR mass spectra. Here, we have the normalization option, which determines whether we will normalize the intensity of the data points in the mass spectrum. The default is to normalize everything to 1 or 100%, with relative intensity on the y-axis. If we choose to not normalize the spectrum, the y-axis will now be an absolute signal intensity. This is useful if you want to compare absolute intensities between different mass spectra. Otherwise, the normalization is the default option. Finally, at the end of these parameters, we have options on how to linearize the data. By default, linearization is turned off because the bin value is zero. There are five options for linearization in Unidec. There's a linear, linear resolution, nonlinear, linear interpolated, and linear interpolated resolution. To show the effects of linearization, I will zoom into the mass spectrum with a minimum of 9000 and a maximum of 9200 m over z. I'll start with linear. When we choose linear, Unidec picks data points in every n m over z value based on the n that we enter. For example, if I set a bin number of 5, Unidec will linearize the spectrum.
such that there is a data point every 5 m over z. Basically, it will combine all the intensities around each 5 m over z step into a single new data point. Here we see a bin size of 5 distorts the data. Here's another example using a bin size of 2. With a bin size of 2, you can still see how the intensities are, are summed together between bin sizes. Linear resolution is similar to linear, but rather than sampling at a constant m over z step, it samples a constant resolution. For example, if we set this value to 5, the first step will be 5 m over z, but the next step will be slightly larger to keep the resolution constant across the m over z range. Nonlinear works di very differently than linear. When a bin size is set for linear, that means that every end number of data points will be averaged into one data point in m over z. If I choose a bin size of 5, that means that the m over z values and intensities of every 5 data points will be averaged into one new data point throughout the mass spectrum. Here's an example with a bin size of 2. Nonlinear is the default because it is the least disruptive to the data. It preserves the nonlinear spacing found in many mass analyzers. It is also effective at smoothing the data without broadening the peaks. Finally, it is a simple way to reduce the number of data points and speed up the algorithm in Unidec. Next is linear interpolated, which is similar to linear in that it samples the data every n number of m over z units. However, rather than combining all the data between sampled points, it interpolates the original data and generates a linearized spectrum based on the interpolation. Interpolation should only be used if you are trying to oversample the data and isn't recommended for normal use. I'll give an example of oversampling. Let's set this bin size to 0.1. If we use linear and hit process, you'll see how the data now shows a lot of narrow m over z peaks. Why? Because the bin size is smaller than what the data was sampled at. So a lot of these bins have no data, resulting in many sporadic data points with intensities of zero. Now let's use linear interpolated. You'll see that the data more closely matches the original data because the spectrum is linearized with interpolation, which predicts that there's intensity between the data points. Linear interpolated resolution is the same as linear interpolated, except that it keeps all the m over z data points at the same resolution. Ultimately, nonlinear is recommended because it has the least potential for artifacts and distortion of the data. However, linear can be useful to speed up deconvolution, especially with native QTOF mass spectra, where it is common to have broad peaks that are highly sampled. With that, we have covered all the parameters in data processing. The next video will cover deconvolution parameters in Unidec. Thank you for choosing Unidec.